This is the fourth chapter of a book-length poem that I've recently completed called To Banquet with the Worthy Ethiopians, A Memoir of Life Before the Alphabet. The poem takes place in a summer camp where a young boy struggles to read a prose translation of the Iliad by W.H.D. Rouse. And he begins to suspect that the Trojan War, with all its slaughter and intrigue, is being reenacted by the adolescent boys in his bunk and camp. This chapter doesn't take place at the camp, but instead at the border between myth and time. It's a passage that we all undertake uh, from childhood to adulthood, but it's also one that our culture undertook about 3,000 years ago by the agency of the alphabet and a man that we call Homer. So this chapter is called First Scrivener. The summer of love, the summer cities burned, radiates like a monstrance many seasons, while cave figures and totems ruin the gate. Odysseus crashes to baton Thersites, and Agamemnon executes a Viet Cong, and Aphrodite swirls through People's Park, and Cassandra, napalmed, arms outstretched, runs naked into the living rooms of queens. Time bleeds, and names metastasize, and always a girl flees a burning city. Detroit, Saigon, Moscow, Carthage, Ur. As generations pass like fallen leaves, a distant scion of Troy's burning girl sings in a foreign tongue on a windy coast. Scriveners say there never was a child. Time doesn't bleed and the song belongs to nobody or everyone or else it's a cultural phenomenon. They say, the Cassandra photograph is faked. In mid-trance, the child's eyes marble, watching his ancestral city burn. Scrivener's colloquy and finally concede to name the child Homer. 